Hello, it's Alex. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm sorry I've not been around for a little while. I got a little bit uh, carried away and decided to do some decorating. I've decorated this room that I'm in now. This was uh, where I used to always do my videos and previously was painted boring old grey. Um, and yeah, I really like the colour I've painted it. It's actually a little bit darker than it looks on camera though. It's definitely a, a bottle green. And um, yeah, with it being Christmas, it's feeling particularly warm and cozy. I've got the tree up, which is behind, behind where you are, <laughs> in the window. Um, yeah, with decorations and stuff. Um, it feels really nice, I'm really pleased with it. But you know what it's like when you do any decorating. I've always been the person that's done the decorating um, and I've always quite enjoyed it actually. Um, but when you do any decorating, you always forget how much upheaval there is and how the whole of the rest of the house seems to be impacted. And in this case, made even worse by the fact we also decided to secretly decorate our son's bedroom. When we moved into this house, his was the only room that didn't get new carpet. It needed it. We decided at the time, he was 11, and we decided that uh, teenage boys probably didn't need a new carpet. Uh, but now that he's almost 20, um, we thought we'd do that. So it was supposed to be a surprise for when he came home for Christmas, except he decided to come home a little bit early and have a couple of days here. So uh, yes, surprise has been spoiled. But the point being, there's a lot of upheaval, upheaval decorating a couple of rooms and sewing has been taking a back seat because when you do finally finish, you then find there's a whole load of chores and other things, not to mention, of course, Christmas. I have been doing some sewing in the last week or so. Um, a couple of those things are for Minerva. So there will be blog posts going up on Minerva over the next couple of weeks. Um, but part of the deal with them is that you make sure that they kind of get the blog first before you talk about it anywhere else. Um, but I am wearing um, something that I made and I'm really, really pleased with it. It is another Minerva um, fabric. So the fabric was gifted uh, in exchange for a blog post over on their website. Um, but I really, really like it. I'm kind of pleased because it's worked out exactly how I hoped. So it's a stretch velvet. Um, I think this is the beige colourway, I think that's what it's called, but it comes in lots of different um, colours, really big, nice selection of colours. Um, but my thinking was that I wanted to make something very casual um, and kind of sweatshirty with it, rather than, you know, a fancy schmancy dress or anything, because I thought I am not really the uh, most blingy person in the world and I thought if I made something out of this velvet then you know even though it's still quite a casual item like a sweatshirt at least it's a sort of nod to Christmas so um, if I've popped out with friends for a sort of festive coffee or anything like that then I've bunged it on and I feel like at least I'm kind of making yeah a bit of an effort without going kind of the whole hog or kind of out of my comfort zone really I'm not really a sort of uber I'm not really into um, sequins or things that are sort of super glittery and that kind of thing but I really like the stretch velvet um, yeah and it's really I mean obviously it doesn't really have any natural fibres in it but it is actually really nice and comfy to wear and you do find or I've been finding that I'm sitting stroking myself quite a bit <laughs> <laughs> um, this pattern is a fibre mood and I have uh, not been the greatest fan of fibre mood patterns but I had a real urge when I was looking um, to make this I didn't want to make a hoodie and I didn't want to make one with set in sleeves I just wanted to make a round, I knew exactly what I wanted really I wanted raglan sleeves and a round neck um, and I actually found they were quite uh, it was quite hard to find a pattern like that. Lots of rag and sleeve t-shirts, which are obviously designed to be more fitted, and I pondered whether to do that and then just size up. But I wanted something that was designed to be, yeah, more kind of sweatshirty. Um, but yeah, so this is a Mika from Fibre Mood. 
Um, come in hair everywhere. I am, look how, it's ridiculous. Look how long my hair's going. Desperate, desperate to get a haircut. Um, yeah, probably left it a bit late. All the hairdressers are probably booked up. Anyway, nothing to do, so. Um, yeah, really, really like it. Lovely fabric. Um, and I'm just enjoying, yeah, having something to wear that feels a little bit Christmassy. <laughs> as Christmassy as I'm ever going to get. Last year, um, I don't know if you remember, but last year my kind of Christmas outfit was a pair of pyjamas. And I'll insert a picture. And the reason I'm inserting a picture and not showing you the pyjamas is that I've lost them. And um, yeah, I'm really annoyed. I've made them out of this really nice fabric, jersey fabric from Lamazi. And um, I thought I was being very clever in um, after Christmas last year when we packed everything up and I put the pyjamas in with a load of fabric that my daughters and I had used as wrapping for Christmas presents. Um, every year, well not every year, but we try to do some kind of Christmas craft and last year I took any kind of fabric of mine that would have gone to something like a fabric swap and a sewing meetup. Things I didn't want, but still had some kind of use to it. I had a pile like that and we went through it and we painted on the fabric and used it for wrapping presents. And then the idea is that we would use it every year. So um, it was good fun. It was a nice thing to do with the girls. Jack, not so interested. Um, but yeah, we've put it somewhere safe. And I know for sure that the bag or the box, I can't remember quite what it's in, that we put all the fabric in, also had my pyjamas in it. And I remember at the time thinking, oh, that would be brilliant, because when I find it next year, I'll go, oh, amazing, my Christmas pyjamas. Put it in a safe space, and you know that when you put it somewhere safe, never a good idea. So, uh, I've got to go on a bit of a hunt and find those, because... Yeah, it's really annoying. <laughs> and I don't know about anybody else, but we are not a family that goes to lots of events over Christmas. We don't have a big family on either side. Both David and I have brothers, but they are abroad. So, uh, yeah, one's in Canada and one's in Germany. So we don't have that kind of thing with siblings and cousins. Um, so it's just us and the kids and David's mum for Christmas and we do like to sort of go slow. <laughs> we lounge around a lot and we play a lot of board games and eat Quality Street and watch Christmas movies and all that sort of thing. Uh, this will be our first dry Christmas, we're not having any alcohol, we've been gradually uh, more and more teetotal over the last few years and this year I haven't had, I had half a glass of champagne when I went to a wedding at the end of June, and that's about it. So we decided that we just not bothered. So we won't be having any booze. Uh, kids will. When I say kids, they are in their, youngest is about to turn 20. <laughs> so they're in their early 20s. Uh, they're not small children. That would be strange. Um, but yeah, so we're looking forward to Christmas, and it will be kind of... Yeah, it'll be really nice, especially because these days they all live away from home at uni and the oldest one's graduated now. Um, so we don't all get together too often anymore. We had a day in the summer and then before that it was Easter that all five of us were here. So really, really looking forward to having everybody home. Um, and I suspect that means that because the first ones, they all start coming home over the next over this coming weekend. Um, so I suspect that means that there won't be any videos for me until after Christmas because the babies come first. <laughs> um, I am now on a bit of a panic because I have a few things that I want to make for Christmas and because they're all starting to come home, my time will not be, um, yeah, I won't be able to focus on sewing as much. Um, I finished making those heyday dungarees for Grace, who is my youngest daughter, or Queenie, she uses her middle name, which is Queenie, more than she says, uses Grace, because Grace is boring, everyone's called Grace. Um, 
yeah, so I've made her the dungarees. And my plan is I've got it cut out and ready to go to make there's this brilliant apron um, sewing pattern. I'll put a picture up. It's from Waffle Patterns. And I really, really like Waffle Patterns. I made a skirt from them. Um, they make really nice outerwear. If you're into somebody who, if you're into somebody, if you're somebody who's into kind of um, like walking and anoraks and uh, things with lots of pockets, they're great at those kind of designs. Um, and this apron that I'm going to make had, comes in two styles. Uh, one is a full one with a bib and one is just a waist apron and it has a gazillion pockets and hanging loops and useful bits and pieces. Um, so I'm making one for my oldest daughter, for Ruby, because she is an artist and a lot of her work is with quite heavy machinery. She uses a lot of tufting guns. She makes fabulous art with rugs. Um, so she will really appreciate one um, and hopefully if I've got time I'm going to make the waist size one for my husband who you probably know because I'm often in his shed uh, likes to paint and do all things creative as well but I think this pattern is a really nice one because it would work really well for a baker or a gardener or you know somebody who likes to you know somebody who's done maybe woodwork or crafter of any sort, anyone like that. I think it's a really, really nice pattern. And having made that skirt before, I know that the instructions are good as well. So my only problem is trying to find the time. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna to to close the door to the sewing room and kind of put a sign up. No one come in. It just reminded me that I don't think I ever talked about can I even show you the bag? It's just here, that's why I'm thinking about it. That I made is a Marilla Walker pattern. Um, yeah, I think I put a picture on Instagram. It's a really nice bag, you know, it's got these pockets either side, four pockets, and it's great for, you know, you can see I've got started knitting again. Yeah, look, how oh, look at that colour. Um, yeah, so I've been keeping knitting stuff in it, but also sometimes I crochet. So it's great because you've got the pockets around the edges to put all the random bits and pieces. Um, oh, do you like my scissors? I really like these scissors. They're like in the shape of a skull. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so things like crochet, knitting and whatever. But again, um, you know, gardening or whatever, or just as a bag. And I think there's a couple of variations with the pattern. I think you can have it so that it has, you know, like a fabric bit at the top with a drawstring. And then there's also another pack bag that comes in the same pattern that's one that you can completely fold out flat, which is great for somebody with an allotment or a garden that wants to put produce in it and then tie it all up. Anyway, just thought I'd mention it. So I love Marilla's dress patterns, um, but yeah, it's a nice little one. And I used up um, scrap fabric, which is always satisfying. Yeah, my main thing at the moment is I feel like I'm running out of time. I've got so many things. I think because I had a sort of enforced break from sewing because of the decorating, um, I've got so many things that I want to make. I am struggling a little bit with... Um, bottom clothes. I don't mean clothes for my bottom. I mean things like skirts and trousers. Um, be quiet! Um, because, uh, yeah, some, I've got quite a few things that are not fitting at the moment. Um, since I started at the gym in April, I am slightly changing shape. And when I got all my, war all my winter things out of my wardrobe, um, some of my old favourites are just too big. So I've got to either spend a bit of time taking things in and seeing if I can adjust them or, oh dear me, <laughs> having to sew some new things. I've got a real hankering to make this dress and it is the Delano dress. I'll put an image of it better. From, I've no idea how you pronounce this pattern company. It's O-S-E. 
in my head it's ooze, but I'm sure that's not right. Uh, not sure where they're based. Um, but I love this pattern. It comes as a dress in two lengths, a midi length and a sort of above the knee and a top. And I did make the top and I know I didn't show it to you because I'm not too pleased with it. And it's more to do with fabric choice. Actually, shall I go and get it? I'll go and get it, hold on. Okay, so here it is. Pretty bold print. I'm fairly sure that this came from Rainbow Fabrics in Kilburn. And I loved the print when I saw it on their website. And when it came home, I really loved it. But now that I've made it, I'm not convinced. I, You know when you make something and you think, I know I'm just not going to wear that. Um, so I might see if my mum wants it. Sometimes she likes things that I've made. Um, but there were a couple of, apart from the fact that I kind of, fell out of love with the print and it's pretty bold isn't it you're gonna to have to love this if you're gonna wear this kind of print um, there's a couple of other reasons one it's super fluid and it has a center front seam and I tried so hard to get the pattern to match at the front and I failed um, and I know if this was ready to wear you wouldn't care but I do um, and that I was going to bug me forever more so that was enough to stop me wanting to wear it but most importantly I don't feel that it was a good choice and um, the things that I love about this pattern are really nice details it has it's got this v-neck but at the side of it it has these yokes and then pleats that fall away from the yoke um, and I just feel like with a busy print like this you can't see that it just doesn't register. Um, and the thing I really love about it is the sleeves. I think the sleeves are beautiful. Um, so yes, you can see that to some extent, but yeah, it was, it was a fail. So what I'm hoping to have time for is to make the dress version. I am not going to make the long one. Um, I'm going to try and make the shorter one. I don't know quite how short it is, I can't remember, but for me I'll probably go just above the knee. I don't really want to go super, super mini. That would be very out of character. So I've got two fabrics um, that I'm not quite sure which way I'll go. They're both velvet, they were both from Rainbow Fabrics and Kilburn got a black one which is a uh, modal and it has that nice velvety sheen to it and then I got this one which is a green one uh, which is a viscose velvet and it does mm, see it kind of does look like it has a bit of a sheen on camera there but it actually doesn't it's pretty matte um, which is a bit disappointing um, but I still think that that dress would look really nice in this. And it's still, I mean, obviously velvet is fairly thick, but it's still drapey enough that um, I think it will work. Might be a little bit difficult around those sleeve cuffs, actually. Hmm, haven't thought about that. Maybe I do need to think about something else. But I can't help but think a nice velvet dress for Christmas would look really good, especially now. I've lost my pyjamas. So yeah, uh, running out of time is my main thing. I've got these two aprons to make and then hopefully I'll manage time to make a dress. If not, then it'll all get abandoned. Um, I'll be doing midnight sewing on the aprons and the dress might have to get forgotten if there's too much family stuff going on. We'll see. So those are my plans for the immediate future, if I have the time. Um, I did just want to say thank you so much for all the brilliant um, ironing board suggestions following my last video. Um, you know, I was saying that I had the big ironing board set up in my room and it was clogging up space and I was looking for an alternative. Lots of you suggested the mats. Um, I have to say, I had kind of been vaguely aware of them, but when I thought about it, I decided not to go the mat route. Um, I don't know why, it's purely psychological. I felt, felt like I wanted it to be a surface that's slightly elevated. Don't know why. 
Um, obviously I've got a sleeve board as well, but that's only a tiny little thing. Um, but I loved the suggestion of the fold-up ironing board from, what is that brand called? Joseph Joseph. Um, thank you, lovely Rosie, because she, Rosie Radcroft sent me a DM on Instagram within seconds. And um, a few other people came up with the same suggestion of that same ironing board. It's brilliant. Um, yeah, it's really good. I will put some images in. Um, I've got, David has, uh, put the little there's a little hanger for it that's on the wall in my sewing room and not only does it fold up you can actually put the iron into it and then I just take it out and put it on my cutting board um, on my cutting table and it's perfect. Slightly odd because the cutting table is higher than normal table height um, so it's a little bit like this only a little bit um, but it's working really well for me and added bonuses, the lighting is better in that part of the room as well. So I've been able to take my ironing board out of the room, um, which means, yeah, it just feels like I can walk around and it feels a bit more spacious. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for all your support all year round. It really does mean a lot. Um, yeah, honestly, it really does. Um, I will see you all in the new year. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, there will be a blog post on Minerva if you want more details on my top and there probably will be a couple more in the next couple of weeks. Um, obviously I'm over on Instagram but yeah have a wonderful Christmas. See you soon. Bye bye.